it's uh, very far above my expectation. Show the customers what we can do with our product. Today we are looking at the testing stages of new crop. Analytical services, test and pilot bakery, noodle lab, and pasta plant. Analytical services is responsible for testing wheat and flour quality. For the wheat, we would analyze the protein content, falling number, the ash content, as well as particle size index, which gives us an indication of how hard or soft the kernel is. Now the test that we do on the flour, we again would analyze the protein content, the ash content, the wet gluten content, and then we would test for rheological properties. And those just give us an idea of the strength and the quality of the flour. This is the glutamatic. When we actually uh, go to do something like the gluten index, we're also using the centrifuge over here. We're, we're weighing uh, the amount of the gluten that passes through on the backhand side versus the amount that stays on the initial side after it's been centrifuged. So the more that passes through, uh, the weaker that gluten tends to be, it tends to be more stretchy, whereas if it was a very strong gluten, it would pretty much stay on the initial side of that cartridge. So it gives us an idea of the, the quality of the gluten. This is the falling number test. It involves um, the grinder, the shake and then the falling number instrument. Once we receive the whole kernel sample, we grind a representative amount of it, which is about 250 to 300 grams. We weigh out seven grams, and it's mixed with 25 milliliters of water. From there, it goes into the falling number instrument. So the sample mixes for 60 seconds in the falling number instrument, and then the stir rod is allowed to fall through the sample and the time it takes for it to fall through is uh, the falling number measured in seconds to measure sprout damage in wheat. Things like the farinograph water absorption that's going to be very important for uh, the bakery especially. Uh, they're going to want to know how much water that flour can absorb and also how long they can mix it for to get to its optimum point. Different areas need different pieces but also when it goes back to any of the, the grain distributors and that they have a whole set so they can use whatever they need out of there as well. Uh, we're standing right now in the commercial pilot bakery at Ziggy. Our new crop testing is quite comprehensive. We look at all the classes of Canadian wheat. We need at least 9 or 10, or 10 kgs of each flour sample. We mix the dough out of that sample and then we produce a number of loaves to assess flour baking functionality. And also during all the bread making steps we uh, record certain parameters which also indicate about flour quality. We do both extremes. We look at a very short fermentation process called a no-time dough, but then we also go the extreme and look at a four-hour sponge and dough. So this is a very long fermentation process where we actually set a portion of that flour and water aside for four hours, more time for chemical reactions and enzymatic activity. So those are two extremes of what's going on in the baking industry around the world. If it performs well on those two processes, everything else in between won't be a problem. Normally we start uh, testing in the middle of October when the samples arrive to come to Sigi. On average it's uh, about two month period when we uh, do all the evaluation, when we look at all the data and we, uh, when we make the conclusions about flour baking quality. In the test bakery we're looking at it more on a laboratory scale. Everything gets treated exactly the same way, standardized ingredients. Our main test is we focus on hard wheats and we look at different uh, bread methods for testing that. So we do two main tests here that are derived from ACC methods. One is a short process, which we call our no-time dough method, and the other one is a longer process, which we call our long fermentation method. The no-time process looks at how that flour is going to perform, how it handles, and so forth, whereas the long fermentation process adds a little more stress to the flour. Um, causing it to withstand such a long fermentation process, we're really testing out uh, the quality of that flour. We based on 200 grams of flours and for no time dough and long time dough as well. We also do cookie tests and uh, cake testing. We based our flour on 225 grams. On cakes and cookies, we're looking at more uh, softer wheats so uh, lower protein flours. We test these processes also to see a comparison between the test bakery and pilot bakery, between our no-time dough and our long fermentation versus their no-time dough and sponge and dough. But we're also able to see how these flours 
uh, can be unique and useful in other commercialized uh, products. What we look for uh, in product quality for noodles is the color and texture. For the Canada uh, Western Red Spring, our main wheat class, we tested the, the wheat for fresh yellow alkaline noodles, fresh white salted noodles. For the Canada Prairie Spring Red, the CPSR uh, class of wheat, we tested uh, for white salted noodles and also for uh, instant types of noodles, both the bag type and the cup type. For the Canada Western Red Winter uh, class of wheat, we tested it for steam breads and uh, Hokkien types of noodles. For color, we use uh, a minolta chlorometer and a sensory evaluation looking at the noodles. We we'll evaluate the texture both using sensory and also uh, instrumental uh, methods. When you test, you, you fix all the variables. So you test them at the same mixing time, same, everything same. So if there is any differences, there will be inherent quality difference between samples. Focus here on amber durum, Canadian Western amber durum. Minimum quantity, we wanted the durum semolina that they extract from the durum wheat is about three kilograms. So this is our lap scale uh, pass extruder. We have to adjust the amount of water going into the dough. The reason why we do that is typically in a pass a factory, we'll extrude the dough out of a die. Or the pressure at the die will be about 1,400 pounds per square inch. If the dough is too wet, and the pressure will be lower at the die, or the dough is too dry, and the pressure will be very high at the die. So typically, uh, 1,400 psi, as I mentioned, or about 100 bars pressure when the dough goes through the die. The most important characteristics for pasta are the color and the biting quality. And uh, we have instruments to test for, as I mentioned, color and also the strength of the pasta. We have a texture analyzer that cuts through and measures the force required to cut through that spaghetti. And cooking loss, that's just we want to check the amount of starch released in the water when we're cooking the pasta. And cook weight, just get an idea of the amount of water absorption that uh, the pasta will take up while cooking. The reason why we do so many tests is that our results go to people all over the world and some people are more familiar with one piece of equipment than the other. So this way we can use our results with everyone.